Thanks, Leslie and Corla. Minister, the pandemic is taking its toll on everyone's mental health. Um, this is especially felt by people living alone, uh, young people, and people who have not been able to see their family members since last March. The key to addressing increased anxiety and isolation is an effective elimination strategy for the island of Ireland, such as that proposed by the We Can Be Zero campaign. We need immediate measures, a massive investment in public health resources, distribution of the vaccine, and of course, mandatory hotel-based quarantining for people landing on the island, and significantly greater co cooperation with Northern Ireland. This strategy would get us back to normal quicker, give people hope, and therefore, needless to say, address mental health concerns. Also, quicker decisions on issues like the Leaving Cert and Junior Certs and better consultation with people involved would help ease stress and anxiety around these matters. COVID-19 has highlighted the continuing underinvestment in our mental health services, an over-reliance on GPs and overstretched NGOs, a lack of multidisciplinary teams in settings where they are required the most, and the continued practice of keeping people with psychiatric conditions in congregated settings. Also, the recent Mental Health Commission's report on mental health services for older people highlighted the inadequacy of services and the need for urgent improvement. There are three specific items I wish to raise. I know time's limited for reply, but I appreciate any written answers to questions you don't have time. Uh, firstly, staff from primary care mental health services, which were already overstretched before the pandemic, have been redeployed to other services. Resources are being taken away from the preventative and early intervention areas. Before Christmas, the Irish College of General Practitioners informed the Oireachtas Subcommittee on Mental Health that many of its members had stopped referring patients to primary care mental health services because of extensive waiting lists driven up even further by staff redeployments. The resulting only option for many GPs is simply to prescribe medication, which is in no one's interest. Demand for these services will only increase, become more complex and more expensive to treat. How do you intend, uh, intend to address this issue, Minister? Secondly, a major concern I share with many people is the inappropriate accommodation of people with disabilities in congregated settings. There are over 1,500 people with disabilities under 65 who are in nursing homes. Some psychiatric patients reside in institutions and there are many people who are living in intellectual disability services. So despite the best efforts of all involved, COVID-19 spreads quickly in congregated settings. I understand that you inherited this situation, but you still have to respond to it now and urgently. Um, I'm wondering what measures have been taken to protect these people, including the distribution of the vaccine to those under 70 in these congregated settings. Finally, you mentioned eating disorders, and we know COVID does exacerbate existing mental health issues. So it's very worrying that no funding was allocated to the National Eating Disorder Treatment Plan for 2020, and that of the 1.6 million allocated in 2019, none of it was spent. Eating disorders, uh, which disproportionately present among young women, are some of the psychiatric conditions most associated with mortality. While these were HSE decisions, Minister, I would appreciate if you could look into it personally and urgently and get back to me. Thank you. Minister. Mahagood, thank you, Deputy, and thank you for rearing, uh, raising these really significant issues. I'm going to work backwards in relation to eating disorders. I have been really concerned um, about the, the fact that over the last three years, very little of the money that was designated has been spent. I had a meeting with the HSE yesterday in relation to this and in relation to staffing issues for eating disorder. I think I... I I'm just speaking off the cuff now, but I think it was 4.7 million will be available to, to me this year, and I guarantee you all that money will be spent. I'm very, very concerned in relation to eating disorders. I have met with the HSE clinical program leaders. I have met with BodyWise, and I would be very, very concerned um, in, in relation to that. Um, just in relation to the vaccination rollout, so just to give, um, just to give an update, as of the 28th of January, which is last Thursday, the Mental Health Commission reported that of 46 mental health facilities with residents aged 65 plus, staff in 31 and residents in 36 mental health facilities have received the vaccine. So out of the 46, staff in 31 and residents in 36, that was all of last week and it's continuing this week as well. So I should have more updated figures by the end of next week. In those congregated uh, okay, sessions. so obviously the, the people with disabilities don't come under, don't come under um, my remit, but what I will say is currently the rollout is for 65 um, and over only, and they will come then in, in the next cohorts. 